Oh, this is a life for me. I wish I was at sea. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, people. I found the absolute heaven upon heaven in what's going to be an Arctic blast coming. It's a beautiful day. Do not get me wrong. Not, well, barely the one up there. Not a cloud in the sky. Tomorrow they're going to give wind chills of minus five. This is April. What is going on? No wonder the fishing's all over the place. It's bizarre. But I found a warm place in the greenhouse. I mean, we don't really put a lot of plants in it. We've got the occasional geranium I'm trying to salvage from last year. Some of them are have expired. Some are quite sad. But you know what? Anything I salvage. One, two, three, four, five. So you're about seven here. Better than nothing. It's the temperature in here has to be 75 degrees and it's 10 o'clock in the morning. It's lovely. Often I do pop in and have a cup of tea in here, but I don't normally uh, sit in here reclined. And of course, with the cold weather coming, the cloud goes in, this is still going to be a warm place. Anyway, last year has been bizarre with this COVID business, honestly. Oh no. Don't look at the sun, Graham. <laughs> Always look at the sun twice. No, I can't get two sneezes. I think the world record's 42. I had a really surreal day. It was last year, just into the lockdown. It was so similar today, I thought, you know what, I've held that film specifically for this time of year. It was really weird. It was just as we started the lockdown. It was so calm, so clear, and of course, it was a year ago, and while I really, really enjoyed this is a walk, not a fisher, not a fisher, no, no casting, no fishing, a walk, I was not allowed to go fishing. You had one hour to do some exercise. I thought, can I get a film, you know, finished in one hour? I really enjoyed this walk. I'd like to take you guys along with it because it just shows a piece of English countryside that there must have been 50 or 100 years ago and I seem to sort of capture it with the camera. I did for me anyway, that's how I feel. So it's a non-fishing filler film. Film's not been shown before, I've kept this one back. But the days are so similar, albeit the temperature's not, I figure you guys might like to watch it. So look, it's not fishing, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a reminisce back at what it was like. Who would have thought here, just over a year later, I want to say we're in a better position, but are we? Enjoy this for what it is. I'm going to sit back and relax. Oh, that temperature is something else. Where's the sun green? Well, it's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Or in this case, perhaps not. It's going to be one of my uh, little video vlogs on my one hour walk around. I'm not going to be using the bike this time. I'm going to be seeing if I can really crack some pictures off in the short one hour time I've got. So I'm going to be marching on, I'm going to show you guys a bit of the Hampshire countryside as much as I can squeeze in to an hour. And I'm doing this, wait for this, over my lunch hour, I'm going to try and squeeze that in as well. Let's get going. Now you may have heard that term, grasp the nettle. So sting nettles have tiny little fibres which will sting you. Most of you I find they're pretty bad in the autumn. But there's one with a white flower like this one. And these ones, I find, don't sting. They never do sting when we were kids. We used to play with them. So they've got the white flower here and you can pick these up. Look, white flower ones, they don't seem to sting you. The ones without white flowers on, beware of. Now here's something you don't see every day, even on the supermarket shelves. A different creature. Let's get through the gate and have a look. A 
over here we have some I'm going to call these Mongolian long neck sheep they're about the size of a small horse it's not actually till you get quite close you realize actually they're quite big ah the left hand one looks like a charger how close do I get? That looks like a look from my mother-in-law. You're doing what? See how big they are guys? Pretty big. Do they come, I want to know, from Argentina? Over here we have Shetland ponies. And I know they're Shetland ponies. I used to have one as a child. And they come from Shetland. Now this bit here, this is really rubbing salt into the wound. A river, the river season is closed. It's been flooded, it's dropped down. There's no colour in it, it's perfectly Gin clear, you can't fish. Nice to see though. I suppose that's where the saying comes from. That's the long and the short of it. And there's two things that I can vouch for that I know Shetland ponies are good at. Throwing eight-year-old boys out of the saddle onto the ground and eating. They are absolute eating machines. This field will be gone in two days. Look at this, this is here, machine gun post, a pillbox, what you'd call a pillbox, and of course it's chopped away here, so they could get their guns against it at different angles, you've got a wider angle, so if you measure from here, with the barrel across there, they could get probably 45 degree angle of fire there, and that's where they put the machine guns. A big concrete, probably two feet thick bunker. And a big house behind it, so I suppose the owner of the house must have paid for that to be built in the Second World War. Maybe First World War. Right, but the uh, top open end, I've been all through the small footpath, and this is a real panoramic vista. Wouldn't it be nice to build a house here facing south southwest? Beautiful field there. Let's hope they don't turn it into a housing estate. But what I do love is that huge, broad vista of no planes in the sky. This is most surreal and unfortunately it does bring back memories of the last time planes were dropped out of the sky and that is 9-11. I know because I was fishing 
on the west coast of British Columbia at a place called Banfield. I was out fishing with a, a pal. We came out, we went out at dawn, we came back. I guess we came back for breakfast or something like that, about 10 in a boat. We were fishing around the islands there. Um, came right back and one of our other friends at our party was standing on the jetty with a rather glum look on his face, to say the least. And it, it, it was just like you couldn't believe it. He said they've attacked America. Excuse me? There's been thousands killed. I mean, we all remember where we were on 9-11. That was just weird. I can remember going to Vancouver Airport and there were like 5,000 people with the vast majority screaming they're the most important person in the world. They've got to be on the flight. <clears throat> we were fishermen. We just sat in the corner and let them go on with it because no one, but well, nobody was going anywhere. And I fear that this virus has the same sort of eeriness about it. There's not a plane in the sky. There's not a white smoke trail anywhere. Which is nice, but not nice, if you know what I'm saying. Beautiful blue sky. Few people lawn mowing. Very occasional guy cutting branches, I guess. It's so silent. It's, it is spooky, people. It's, I'm not going to say it's not. This is the weirdest time. 9-11 was instant. You could, you could see that within two hours. And in three months, the entire planet's infected with this virus. It's scary. I just hope we all get through this one. And then you can get out to enjoy a scene like this. Well, this one's a bit strange because there's a huge field here and they've got trenches dug. I want to say like they're planting potatoes, but when you go up to them, the actual trenches are hugely deep. I'll take you up and show you. I can't imagine the crops going in there. I wonder would they have sort of furrowed this this deep for drainage purposes, because we've had an awful winter. It's been rain, rain, wind, rain, wind, rain. This is the first three days we've had of blue sky and drying out. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if we do get to the situation where you're surviving on what little there is left in the landscape, one place we will be coming is this embankment down the side of the road. It's full, I mean full of rabbit diggings, rabbit warrens. So this will be a good place if you wanted to get some food and survive. Let's hope it doesn't get that bad and we can still get food out of the supermarkets. But at least I will know where to come and get some rabbits. Yeah, what's up, Doc? <laughs> Here's fresh ones where they've been digging. All along this bank, whole thing, holes, holes, holes. I remember walking that field on the other side about half a mile and seeing a fox hunt the rabbits one evening. That's pretty cool. Now, see these ones? No white flowers, these are the ones that will sting you. And when they say grasp the nettle, it's not because when you brush past it, you get stung. If you grab it quick, ah, it stings you. That's a theory, guys. It's supposed to grasp the nettle and crush the little fibres. And in my case, it didn't work.
Well, here is another panoramic vista. But what's interesting about this one, there's a pillbox here, a machine gun post. Maybe barely 200 yards away, there's another machine gun post. And I'm just looking here, like the corner of a triangle, another machine gun post. Now, was this hill of strategic importance years ago, or is it just there's a very big expensive house over yonder, big estate house, and the owner of the house said, I want protecting from these enemy people, and wanted these built, maybe even had him built himself, because there's no railway line here that I know of which would be strategic, and then why would you need three machine gun posts? And also, why would the attack, why would it come from that way? I don't know. Obviously, these military people, had reasons for building all these. For me, the only rumble is not from guns, it's from my stomach. I'm going up here by this pillbox, I'm gonna make a cup of tea and I'm gonna have something to eat for my lunch break. What a view. Don't shoot. Don't shoot guys, don't shoot. Don't shoot, I've got the tea bags. Well, a lady I passed just now with some dogs said it's not drainage, that is in fact for loads and loads of potatoes so they dig them in the, dig the trench put the potatoes in like i used to before as a youngster pile them up and as they grow you have to keep earthing them up so you stop the sunlight getting to the potatoes if the sunlight gets to them they go green they're no good so you've got to keep earthing them up
Now that's what I call an incredible view. Well, I hope you people enjoyed that. I mean, it was just a walk, but there was just something special about that walk. Well, look, I do loads of walking, there's no question of that, and I take the camera with me. But it just seemed to go click, 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 and I got some lovely shots. I Look, I've got the world's best photographer. I've been doing it a long time, though. And I just seemed to be seeing pictures wherever I was turning. Thanks for supporting us. Thanks for watching TA Fishing. Thanks for watching TA walking and rambling and countryside stuff. Obviously, there's fishing films to come. And listen, guys, I'm going to tell you, I've got 12, 14, 20, about 20 plus films of fish, all good fishing ones. I've been holding and holding and holding them off, trying to get, get so I could drop them at the right time for you people. Figuring once you get out and you can get fishing, everybody's going to be keen again. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to eat fishing to eat outdoors. Meanwhile, we'll see you in the next film. We're going to have a cup of tea. Uh, well, it's not actually tea, is it? It's not actually tea. You guys, and there's no flies on you guys. I'll tell you what, you can't beat a good cuppa straight out of the water, but. Oh, leech. Oh. See you next time, guys.